This week's video is all about graphs, charts and scales. Graphs come in all shapes and sizes and allow us to show data and compare data. Different types of graphs are better for comparing different types of things. Have a look at this pie chart. It shows what children in year 6 said their favourite part of Discovery Workshop was. Some said that it was group work, some feedback, independent reading, some said it was immersion, and some said it was language spelling and grammar. Have a look at the question. A quarter of the children liked language and spelling the best. What fraction liked group work? Pause the video and have a go. Okay. Now in this case, it doesn't actually matter about this quarter that was mentioned. What I want to look at is my immersion and my group work. Both of these look similar. Now if I visualise what happens when I move my immersion over to my group work, I can see that they are roughly about a third each. And if I were to add my independent reading and my feedback to my language spelling and grammar, I would probably get a similar sized. This means that my group work is roughly about one third. Pie charts represent a fraction of a whole. So therefore, we can all also use them to calculate a fraction of a total amount. So have a look at the question. If my total amount of 48 children were asked what their favourite part of Discovery Workshop was, how many people said group work? Pause the video and have a go. Now when I'm solving this question, I know that group work represents about a third of my total amount. Now my total amount is 48. And of that 48, my group work represents a third of it. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take my 48 and divide it by 3 to find a third. This means that one section is 16. So a third of my 48 children is 16. So therefore 16 children said they like group work. Another type of graph is a line graph. Line graphs tend to measure a change over time. So one of the axes will always be a time. In this example, we've got number of hours along the bottom on our x-axis, and we've got the height of a candle in centimetres on our y-axis. Have a look at this question. After one and a half hours, how high will the candle be? Pause the video and give it a go. So when solving this type of question, what you've got to consider is how to find midway points between areas on your y-axis and x-axis. First I've got to find one and a half hours, which is halfway between one and two. Now I'm going to use a ruler and draw a straight line up until I reach my line. When I reach my line, I'm going to draw another straight line to join my y-axis to see where it crosses. Again, a common misconception with this is to say that where my line crosses here is actually nine, because it's in between 10 and 8. Now what I've done on here is I've shown you on my red line here where 9 would be halfway between points 8 and 10. Now you can see that the blue line is actually beneath that and so an accurate estimation would be anywhere between 8.5 and 8.7. Bar charts can also be used to represent fractions or parts of a whole. 
So my total number of children are represented by the amount of children in each bar combined. What fraction of children read five to six books? See if you can work this one out. So when looking at this type of question, it's good to get the first thing as your whole. How many children were even asked this question? So I'm looking at my first bar, that was four children, this was ten, this was seven, this was four and this was two. So if I add them all up, I'll get twenty-seven. So my whole is twenty-seven. Now the two areas I'm looking at are between five and six. So this is my seven and four, which add together to give me eleven. So my fraction is eleven out of twenty-seven. Now I can't simplify this fraction so it remains just as 11 out of 27. Solving two-way tables is very similar to the skills we develop using the Kenkens in year 6. Using the numbers that you've got to work out any missing ones. So the question to look at first is how many girls had a PlayStation? Pause the video and see if you can work this one out. So to begin with, I've got to identify the area of my table I need to find out, which is this. How many girls had a PlayStation? But I've got a problem, because I haven't got any data on this row, and I've not got any data on this column that can help me work it out. So I've got to look at another row or column to see if I can have something I can use for the other row. Now I can see here that my total is going to help me. And it can help me in two ways. I can either use it to find out how many girls there were in total, or I can find out how many boys and girls had an Xbox in total. The one that's only going to help me get to this point is going to be finding out how many girls there were in total. So to find that out, if my total was 63, I can take away what I already know, which is 33 boys, which will leave me with 30 girls. So I can see there, I've got 30 girls, 33 boys and 63 children all together. So now it's going to be straightforward to work out how many girls had a PlayStation. So I'm going to do 12 add something equals 30. I can do the inverse, and do 30, take away 12 equals 18. So I know now that there are 18 girls who had a PlayStation. Next up is scales. Scales can be very similar to number lines and we can use them to mark certain points and find areas in between. On this scale I've got one and two. I've got unknown gaps in between. Where would 1.8 and 0.6 go on this scale? See what you can remember and have a go. Now a common misconception for this one would be to say well this is zero so I'm going to count up in twos. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and I'm going to say that this is 0 0.6. But obviously, if I count on another 0 0.2, I'm only going to get to 0 0.8, and I should be getting to 1. Another misconception is to say, well, I know I need to find out what the gap is between these two. So the gap between 1 and 2 would be 1. And I can remember that I need to divide that by the amount of parts I've got in between that make up this whole gap. And I can see there are 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to take 1 and divide it by 3. But 
what we need to consider is that although there are three parts that I can see there, if I were to draw a bar, I would have four parts to it. So I can again say my gap is one, and I want to find out what this chunk is here. So I've got four chunks. I'm going to take one, divide it by four, which will give me 0 0.25. So I know it's going up in 0 0.25. And if I go backwards and say this is zero, I know that this is 0 0.25. This would be five, and this would be 0 0.75. So 0 0.6 would come slightly before halfway. So this part here would be 0 0.6. 1 1.8, I can do the same thing. So I'm going to start from 1. And I'm going to go up in 0 0.25s. So this is going to be 1.25. This be 1.5. 1.75 and 2. So 1.8 is going to go just after 1.75, somewhere around here. 